Ron sent an article to me that shared just one statistic. And I was like, are you kidding me? And then the more I thought about it, the more I'm like, yeah, you know, I guess this is believable. And maybe finally people will believe me that this is one of the big problems, not just in America, but in the church today. Mm -hmm. Exemplified in this one statistic. Yeah. That really kind of makes me feel a little ill. You know what we're about to do? We're about to get real. We're about to have conversations that Christians have behind closed doors, the scary ones, the ones that make you feel uncomfortable. That's where we going. Why? Because we're family. Ustedes son mi familia. So this is the Brian and Janelle podcast. She's Janelle, I'm Brian. And if you don't want to miss anything, just hit that subscribe button. This is the Brian and Janelle podcast. I got this from Ron, and I can't, I still have a hard time figuring this out. So, okay, a a recent survey conducted by one poll uh, for Thrift Books revealed that 55% of respondents, this is over half, (laughs) believe their lives are interesting enough to be a book. Wow, that's crazy. However, only, it says only 8% actually completed a novel themselves. Yeah, duh. Exactly. Uh, Even that struck me as a lot. Right. I mean, because most people don't read at all. Uh, 40% of respondents cited the main reason for, for giving up was being, uh, being unable to think of an ending. <laughs> it's because you're not a writer. <laughs> wow. I, I kind of I kinda gave up on making a rocket ship, you know, because I don't know how to make a rocket ship. Mm-hmm. Right. But 55% of people think their lives, of Americans, think their lives are interesting enough to not only be in a book, but uh, that other people would go, wow, a mm-hmm. book about Janelle? I'm reading that. Yeah. <laughs> no, you have an I might read life. that book. Well, because oh, you're her friend. That? And she'd hand it to you. No. And she'd say, hey, look, I wrote a book about myself. Will you read it? And you'll go like, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. And you will because you're almost required to as her friend. You could write a book. She'll ask you a question. <laughs> you could write. No, no, come on now. Listen. No, come on now. Our stories are like, we're part of a bigger story. So it's not like I can see if we're if we got a little bit of a writer in us. Like your story, you're part of a bigger story with your grandmother's story. and okay. Like there's a lot to I your story. This. And a lot of people can say that. Like if they know about the story behind them, there's something. Come on, Brian. What kind of arrogance does it take <gasps> for someone to think that their personal life is so interesting that it should be put pen to page and published wow. and that it would be successful? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That everyone would go, wow, <laughs> Jimmy Johnson's biography this is what's missing in my life. Now, let me illustrate why that's so ridiculous. Okay. You love Princess Diana, right? Oh my gosh, I do. She that, was yeah. like one of the one of the more interesting people yeah. in the last hundred years. Yeah. Captivated the world's attention. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How many books you read about her? How many? None. How I've, many biographies? None. But okay, so one of the one of your favorite people of all time, yeah, is Princess right, Diana, exactly, right. and you've read no books no, about her. It's not that what interesting. What would make you <laughs> read a, a book about the life of someone you've never heard of? If you won't read one about the most interesting person you can possibly think of in modern history, what would make you pick it up yeah. about Sarah Severson <laughs> to read? Well, she's got a really interesting <laughs> life. <laughs> it's just really interesting. They get good yeah. marketing. I mean, come on now, sell the story to me. Are you playing devil's advocate? (laughs) I know I am. Is there any part of you that thinks this makes sense? No, well, I can see, for example, if somebody like me would say, oh, like your story is interesting. You should write a book. There are good stories out there. There's good stories. What's most surprising, which is probably where you're going at, is that the person would say, no, listen, my story needs to be in a book. You see, so I don't. I think there are stories out there, but the wow, the ego to say, no, listen, it's my story that needs to be in a book. Ron. My book would be The Cure to Insomnia. <laughs> oh, <laughs> reading my life The story. Cure to Insomnia. <laughs> the Just life of Ron this. Eastwood. <laughs> I can see it now. It would, it would not be a page turner because you wouldn't get that far before you'd fall asleep. Yeah. Every day, another page. Oh. Now, okay, there, there, there is a, a popular podcast series called The Moth. Okay, so it's not 
Christian. Mm-hmm. But what it is, is it's average people go up and they oh, I love they, they go to yeah. a live stage yeah. somewhere in the country. There's meetings where this happens. Mm-hmm. And they, they tell, like, essentially their best story. Yeah. I think everybody's got a good story. Yes. I think every person think has so. at least one really good story. Yeah. And you think? some have a bunch. And some have, like, five or six really yeah. good stories. And a lot of the good stories people have is may not even be connected to them. It may be stories they came from. So, like, their parents, their grandparents. So let's not miss out on that. <laughs> but to say, but to, go, but to hey, for someone to say, hey, do you have a good story? Like, do you have one really good story yeah. about your life? Yeah. And someone go, yeah, I think I do. No one would go, oh, wow. Yeah. You are so arrogant. I mean, can you imagine? Mine would be, it was a, a cold, wintry February. <laughs> <laughs> it's in 1979, time ago in Minnesota, <laughs> yeah. young Sandy and Bill off to the hospital. Mm-hmm. Like, who cares? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Most of my life is just like Ron said, drudgery, boring. Yeah. And so is yours. I hate to be rude, but yours and yours yes. and mm-hmm. everyone listening. That's true. And the arrogance it takes to think that you could that 55 percent of people mm-hmm. think that their life yeah. would make an interesting book is. Like scary to me. <laughs> I guess it's a problem, don't you think? Yeah. Or am I, I am I just freaking out in a in a totally inappropriate way? No, Brian. Everyone has a great life story, and it would we should all be reading each other's books. Yeah. No, I think you're mm. you're on. To That's see. a problem. Yeah. yeah. I do like when people make like scrapbooks and and intersperse it with written pages of telling stories of what happened along the way. That you can pass that on to the next generation. Yes. And and you sit down with your kids and you share, oh, here's the story of the summer vacation where we went to uh, Hilton Head and we got stung by jellyfish and, you know, whatever happened. But um, those kind of things are interesting, but they're designed specifically for your family. Yeah. It's not like a, a general market well, read all about my summer vacation. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah it, it's, a, it's a wonderful way to pass on your story as your family. Mm-hmm. And your story, but for, first, Odin uh, was blessed by this. He says his mom and dad gave them a Christmas gift this year already, and it was a book they wrote and published on their life. It was awesome. Now, and again, I think that's fabulous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But for to, to truly believe that anyone would find my grandmother, Agnes Lee, like if you'd see the Agnes Lee, a life from South Dakota to Minneapolis, <laughs> like who would pick that up? Yeah. She was an amazing woman that I love dearly. And I'll tell stories about her to my children and grandchildren the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. But I would be, I, I would tell people, you know what? Don't read that book. There's better stories out there. There's better lives worth following. But mm-hmm. I, yeah. I, maybe yeah. I'm wrong. I think there's actually another article that illustrates how this really is exemplifies uh, one of the fastest growing religions in the world. It's not Christianity. <laughs> You're going to call it a, a lot, religion? Yeah, it has a lot to do with this idea that 55% of Americans think their life is interesting enough to be a book. I think it's a problem. Maybe I'm wrong. If you've been a faithful listener to this podcast, we're just super grateful for you. Can't thank you enough for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us in our journey to follow Jesus a little more closely every day. But I got to remind you about something. We're listener supported. We're a ministry of Moody Radio in Cleveland, and it's donations from people who listen to us, just like you, that allow us to keep making episodes. Would you consider a donation to this ministry? A gift of any amount will make a huge difference. If you want to donate, we'd be so grateful. Just go to moodyradio.org slash Cleveland. Again, moodyradio.org slash Cleveland. Janelle's laughing at me going, you're going to get it. (laughs) You're going to get it today. <laughs> well, how dare you tell people that their life isn't interesting enough for a book, Brian? Yeah, well, here's what, I, here's what uh, <laughs> one really wise person, actually, I should say, not person. Here's what God says. Oh. Proverbs, <laughs> okay. Proverbs 11, 2. When pride comes, then comes disgrace. But with the humble is wisdom. 
or my very favorite, Proverbs 16, 5. Everyone who is arrogant in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Make that your life okay. verse. <laughs> <laughs> Be assured he will not go unpunished. Mm-hmm. So why do I bring this up? Because 55% of Americans in, in a recent survey indicated that, yes, they believe their lives are interesting enough to be immortalized in a book. Hmm. I didn't say one story in their life. Because I think most people have at least one really good story. It has to be told well, Yeah. by the way, which is an art all in, in and of itself. Yeah. Uh, but to think your life is interesting enough to be immortalized in a book, yeah. I think is like 55%. Ew, gross. So one person texted in, and I'm just going to summarize it. Your life may not be interesting enough, but the spirit behind it for believers could be, no, listen, my testimony is interesting enough. What the Lord's done in my life is interesting enough, and people need to hear it so they can be blessed. And, and see, I would like you can It, it could be all disagree. about glorifying God and, and saying, I want to share my testimony. But how would, okay, <laughs> I'm going to glorify God. My story is the best way to do it. No, I, I think the best way to tell God's story, as Ron Hutchcraft said, is to tell your story yeah. mm-hmm. interpersonally. Yeah. But the idea where you go, you know what? You know what the world needs? Me. <laughs> I think that is indicative of a measure of pride that's unhealthy. James in North Olmsted, what are your thoughts? Good morning, everybody. Hey. Uh, my wife was um, born into a Muslim household in Sierra Leone, Africa, and she was of Lebanese heritage. Her mother was a Muslim and went to a Muslim imam because she was having dreams about a rider on a white horse, and she never cracked open a Bible at that point in her life ever. And the imam said, this child you're carrying, if it's a girl, you must name her Mary. If it's a boy, you must name this child Jesus and baptize this baby. It's like the donkey talking, okay, with Balaam and whatnot. Mm. I mean, it's just crazy, right, that an imam would say, this child must be Christian. Well, When she was eight years old, um, her mother arranged for men to sexually abuse her. She physically got abused to bloodiness. Um, Her mom would come and go and be abandoning her and the kids for sometimes two weeks at a time, leaving them with strangers. She lived in an out. She had an outhouse, no running water, no electricity, a gas powered refrigerator that your dinner meal might be your breakfast meal the next day if there was anything left over. Two dresses, no shoes. And so she looked how to escape from this cycle from her own mother, basically was pimping her out. And she was 12 years old, and she found a way. She heard about this family through mutual connections in the neighborhood that was in Lebanon, and she thought she was going there to go to school and have this life and get away from this, you know, wickedness and whatnot. She was into forced labor. She had half the day at school and half the day, you know, taking care of this household being the servant girl, mm-hmm. going up to the rooftop, getting the hose and the water and all this done. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, the Lebanese Civil War was going on and bullets were flying by. She would walk two miles to a Catholic church and just sit there and look at Jesus, never look at the statues and the idols of Mary, while just her eyes on Jesus. Never really taught on any of this stuff. Fast forward, she had a rough go. She came to the United States, became a citizen, had a rough go before I met her 16 years ago. And uh, she was a hairstylist. I was getting a haircut. And I said, are you a woman of faith? Because right there I was on my journey to find the Lord and, uh, and faith and whatnot. She said yes, even though she hadn't been to church for years. Fast forward again through a variety of the Lord's ways. We both got saved together, got married in 06, hmm. and been Praise serving God. the Lord since. When she gives her testimony in more depth in a church environment, particularly with the times with the whole Muslim Christian thing, um, she has a perspective a lot of people don't with all that. And so, yeah, my life, home, humdrum, you wouldn't want a, a book on my life. Okay? <laughs> right. Not compared to hers. So mm-hmm. and even more details than that. But right. there are some out there that that is an impactful life and life change that really is but the Lord naming her before birth even. No, James, I, I don't dispute that that's an interesting story it, or an, an interesting life. Mm-hmm. Because I think there's definitely interesting lives out there. Another one I could tell you about is a guy named Louis Zamperini, who's a believer. Right. But I, it, you should go check it out. I mean, his book is incredible. The book about him is oh, incredible. Oh, yeah. He was the World War II guy. Sure. That was yeah. He, he was an Olympic athlete, met Hitler, knew Jesse Owens, was shot down in a, mm-hmm. in a plane, lit, survived for weeks in the ocean, was a pr- in a prison camp in Japan. I'm not saying that there aren't people whose lives are worthy of being p- p- penned to paper in a book. But I think 55% of Americans saying, oh, yes, my life is so interesting, it should be immortalized in a book. I think that's a problematic statistic. Am I wrong on that? Oh, I, I agree completely. 
Okay, fair enough. So we're on the same page. All right. Great stuff, James. I appreciate you sharing that story. Again, it doesn't discount. I'm not saying there aren't great lives Mm -hmm. with that that are worthy of being in a book. Yeah, I'm saying we got a major problem if 55 percent of Americans go, my life definitely a book. (laughs) Now, if she did write a book, I think I would read it based on James' recommendation there that this book would blow the hair back on your head or something something along those lines. I thought, well, that would be interesting. If I could read a book and get my hair back, yeah. And see, but you know, okay, so (laughs) one gentle pushback on that is there's a real famous Christian book of testimonies called Jesus Freaks. Okay. The the Book of Martyrs. Yeah, Yeah, Fox's Book of Martyrs. Now, if you understand, like those stories, those testimonies are condensed into like three pages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And to get people to buy them, you have to have like at least 50. Mm. So what I'm trying to say here is even some of the most interesting testimonies can probably be condensed down into eh, three pages, four pages. So would you be okay with someone saying, Ten pages? my story would be good for that book? My I have a pages. story worth telling? Yes. Okay, not the, the book part is what you're... But you see what I'm saying? Like okay. some of the people in Jesus Freaks, really, I, I've, I love the book. Okay. Like it's page turner. But if you expanded any of those one stories, yes, more than the ten pages they're offered, mm-hmm. and that's generous, ten pages. Mm-hmm. Most of us would go, oh, boring. <laughs> yeah. uh, I started off wanting to disagree with uh, Brian, but after <laughs> listening to the previous person, I think I may have to sort of still defend my point of view, but still I can see where Brian is coming from. Let's talk it through, though. I, so what, what made you initially say that you disagreed with the idea that there's, a, there's an arrogance problem if 55% of Americans think their life is worthy of a book? Okay, now I'm going to uh, say this uh, on air. Um, maybe 55% of white Americans' life is boring and it's not worth it. <laughs> oh, yeah, it could be. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. I know you are, I know you are. <laughs> what I mean by that is, like, you know, look at Janelle's life, okay? She is a Hispanic, a Latino, you know, and so immediately she brings a different perspective. And for people who are coming from a different country like me, uh, I think her story will be inspiring and her stories about her parents and how they grew up and all the, the adjustments they had to make. So, you know, so similar to that, my story as well, growing up in India, yeah. coming to know the Lord in Saudi Arabia, uh, ha- having lived as a Christ follower in Saudi Arabia. And so what are the different perspectives do that I bring to when I live in America and how I came to America as a missionary, you know, and how that blows the mind away to people when they think, uh, when they say, what do you mean? You know, that there is an arrogance problem mm-hmm. there where Americans yeah. push back and say, oh, what do you mean? Only Americans, we send missionaries to the rest of the world, but not, people cannot come to America as a missionary. And I say how much of an emotional poverty there is in America. So, you know, so um, compared to different cultures, I think some of us may have a story and, and it's all about the way, you know, you're a nerd, Brian, and it's all in the way you present the book. That's right. Well, no, she it's, said it's, that in such a loving way. Well, you're not, uh, okay, and, and see, I love him to death. Yes. I mean, he is so much like me, and you, Janelle, are so much like me in a different way, so yeah, I love yeah. both of you. <laughs> yeah. Well, but but you know, just to to, to drop this in there, uh, for, for those of us who went to, you know, have an undergraduate degree, you have to write papers, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to think of some of the research papers I did. One of them was on the life of, of Rasputin, a really mm-hmm. famous yeah. guy in the Russian Revolution. Uh, and I got, like, I worked at it, and I got about 20 pages out of that puppy. Mm-hmm. And it was like, and he was an interesting guy. But after 20 pages, it was like, wow, we're done now. You know, I agree to what you're saying, but then I have this wonderful hero that I love and admire, and I've been wanting to send her book to both of you as a gift for a long time. I've been sa- I'm saving a copy. One of these days, I'll mail it to you. Um, she was a female physician, one of the first female physicians from America. Her name is Dr. Ida Scudder. Her family has given 1,000 years of missionary work to India, and she came and started this one better hospital, Christian Medical College in Bellore, India. Hmm. And it is the best, uh, um, you know, um, private hospital in the country. And it serves all of Asia. People from all over Asia come there, and many of them come to know Christ. So even after that woman is dead and gone, 
the legacy. Each and every single graduate from that uh, college, we carry Christ in our hearts and we take it and we are all over the world and we take Christ with us everywhere we go and we have that thing of mission field, wherever we are, that is our mission field. And there is a book about her. So and let me take a risk, though, Lydia, with, with, with this. Um, yeah. If you asked her, if you went up to her and said, wow, your life is so amazing, you should write a book about it, what would she yeah. say, do you think? She did not write it. Someone else wrote it. You see? And, Th- this yeah, is what I'm talking about. Absolute, yes, I hear you. So that's where I have to agree with you, and you have changed my perspective on that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Because that that's my, my very point is like if you would talk to somebody like Mother Teresa or some of the people mm-hmm. in, in life who've made a big difference for the kingdom, you yeah. just kind of you go up to them. They're not going to want to talk about themselves. Mm-hmm. They don't want to spotlight on themselves. Mm-hmm. They want to glorify the Lord because that's what yeah, they're there to do. And if you ask yeah. them if their life is worthy of the book, they'd say no. Mm-hmm. no. But we still have 55 percent of people who think their life would be. And my, yeah, that, and my that guess is, is that there. every single one of those people would have a really boring book. <laughs> yeah, I know it sounds mean, okay. but what, what do you, you want me to do? You convince me. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I wasn't trying to, but okay, Lydia, thank you so much for the call. We have to take a quick break. <laughs> when we come back, I think all of this is exemplified in something that uh, David Kinnaman and Gabe Lyons, two uh, famous authors, Christian authors and researchers, have identified as the world's fastest growing religion. And I think many followers of Christ have succumbed to it. No, it's not the Church of Pride. Mm. Okay, even though it sounds like it from what we just <laughs> talked about. You you say the issue is the egotistical or the arrogant, the egotistical side of the arrogance of thinking. Your story is interesting enough for a book. But part of me has an issue with that because I don't like, life isn't black and white. Mm-hmm. And to say that humility always looks like I would never want, like, I would never even think that my testimony belongs in the book. I don't know if I'm comfortable with that. Is it okay for someone ever in history to be so excited about what the Lord has done in them to say, yeah, I want to put it in the book and share it with the world? That I just have an issue with the cookie cutter um, <laughs> thought of humility in this context. Is there a way where you could create a scenario where there wouldn't be pride involved in someone writing their life story? Yeah, I'm sure there's a way you could do it. But I know in the Christian life, it's the, the Christian life is, is about glorifying Christ. Yeah. It's about lifting up Jesus. Mm-hmm. It's about ma- making less of yourself and more of others. Right. Mm-hmm. Consider others as more important than mm-hmm. yourself. Love your neighbor. Love the Lord. It's as you read it time and again, the admonition is it's not about you. It's not about you. Right. And so if someone were to say, yeah, but you know, I got my life's pretty interesting. It is you know, it, me. It's me. I think you you are having an issue in some measure with pride. So again, it's on motive. I can't tell by you saying, I want to share my testimony and put it in a book. Oh, well, then it's about you. Because part of us bringing glory to the Lord is sharing what he does in our life. You see that mm-hmm. with the woman at the well. A lot of times that's all you have is like, listen, all I can show you is what he's done in my life. And that brings him glory. You don't remove yourself. You, it's hard to do yeah, that. It's all a, about your story and what he's done for you. And there's a big difference between running and telling everyone that you've heard the words of eternal life, a man knew everything about me, yeah. versus her going back to her, her house and writing a book. The woman at the well, my <laughs> life story. I think there's a significant difference in that. I see what you mean. Like her story has value, but her story is told by someone else. And she ran and told people about Jesus, not about herself. Someone just texted, said, I agree that writing a book because you think the whole world would be interested in your story is egotistical. However, God's story for our lives that he has for us can be very interesting and uplifting to anyone. I think putting pen to paper and testifying how God has worked in our lives from the little things to the big things can be very beneficial to telling others about how God can make any life awesome and interesting. My life in itself is very ordinary, but God in my life is very extraordinary. And I, what are the best circumstances to share those stories? Conversation and relationship. Mm-hmm. I do too. So you don't think that's cookie cutter? I, that, uh, I don't like the thought of us saying, if you're a believer, this is how you would respond in this conversation. Okay, so life, let me, I mean, there's like let me put it this way. billions of people in the world. Let's just, let's just <laughs> pretend we've just met. Okay. 
Hi, what's your name? <laughs> hey, Janelle, what's up? Hi, I'm Brian. Let me tell you, my life, I have an amazing story yeah. about my faith. I'd like you to hear it now. How, how would you go and talk about me when I walk away? Yeah. What would you say? That it's all about you. Do you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I know it sounds like I, I don't like formulas because life is fuzzy, but the idea of one thinking oneself is so interesting. Yeah. And putting Jesus in there to make it sound Christian. Hmm. Well, it's what Jesus did in my life. That's what's interesting. But here's my book. I think we've got an issue with pride. It's one of those things that Jerry Bridges called in his book, Respectable Sins. Yeah. A respectable sin. I think pride is leaked into the church. Yes, it definitely In a has. dramatic way. Definitely and has. it's a huge part of American culture where we think we are the be all and end all. No, Jesus is. Yeah. Amanda in New Franklin, what are your thoughts? Hi. Um, so I don't think, like Janelle said, it's cookie cutter because somebody saying that my life has purpose and meaning and it could relate to somebody else and inspire them. Um, I view it that way. And I knew a woman um, who I met at a hair shop, and she was talking about her life and how she um, she had grew up um, black and white. And so she wrote a book about her life and um, how she didn't really fit in. And so her life could relate to another little girl who could inspire her or make her feel more comfortable or just change her perspective on life. So I don't view it as somebody saying my life is interesting but I view it as somebody saying my life can impact someone else's. And that could be a testimony. And that could glorify God. Hmm. I, I think it's a good point, Amanda. And I'm, I'm chewing on it as you say it. Although at some point when someone would spend months of their life, if not a year, writing about themselves, convinced that their story will help people, I, I still, I wonder about it. What, what, what passage of scripture would, would like just get behind that and go, yeah, this makes a ton of sense. Spend a year of your life writing about yourself. Like, I can't think of one passage that, that would indicate that, but I can think of a lot who would say, do good works, not for credit, not so people notice, but, so, but because you're so grateful for the love, for what Christ did for you, yeah. you'd be willing to just lay down your life for other people. Okay, and lift so, them up. Do you so, see like the significant difference in that? Again, to highlight the, the thing about motive, let me give you an example. Kind of like what Amanda was saying. Let's say a woman is in an abusive relationship and she knows the Lord and she makes it out. As a believer, and I haven't even been in one, and I'm pretty passionate about it, and I would be cheering for that book. If a woman told me, listen, I'm going to write a book because women need to hear about my story and know that the Lord is powerful enough to get them out. Why would I call that, man, that's all about you? Do you see what I'm saying? So it's all I about do. your heart. Only God knows. Are you writing that book to bring yourself glory? Or are you writing that book to bring me glory mm -hmm. and bless other people? Only yes. God knows that. So I, I just have issues with believers making cookie cutter things because then it makes it easy to judge people. Makes it easy to say, well, you don't fit that. So you got problems. That's where I want to be careful and I understand where you're coming from, and I have to remind myself of my own point, oddly. Mm -hmm. uh, my own point is that it's not that there aren't any life stories worth telling. Yeah. Even anonymous life stories worth telling. Mm -hmm. There are. But the idea that 55% of Americans think that they are one of those <laughs> yeah. stories yeah. is a dramatic symptom of a, a sin the scripture talks about over and over and over again. Again, mm -hmm. Proverbs 16, 5, everyone who is arrogant in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't get much more dramatic than that. Again, what we could do all, all day long is go, yeah, Brian, but what about that person's story? Yeah, Brian, what about that person's story? No, because the My point, point we're is trying not there to... aren't any good stories. No, no, no. But the point I'm trying to make is it's a motive. It's a, it's a heart condition. It's not about... Well, if you're a believer and you're part of that 55%, then you got you got a pride issue. You know, it's a heart condition. So it's not how you respond to that pull. It's where your heart is in terms of why do you want that book written? That's what I'm saying. I think it is, yes. But I'm still trying to find like this dramatic example of the Christian autobiography yeah. that makes sense to yes. me. Yes, okay. And, and by the way, since, I mean, just to be fair, when's, what's the last biography you've read about the life of someone you've never heard of? Oh, actually, I have read. Of the life of someone you've never heard of. Super long. Yes. Who? Barbara Walters. No, you've heard of her. That's what I'm saying. She's famous. 
Oh, like I'm oh, saying you're like, talking about uh, oh, random people. Yeah, like Ron. What's your brother's name again? Doug. Doug. I Eastwood. see what you're saying. Okay. A life in Medina, <laughs> right. well lived. I mean, you're not going to pick that but up. But that's weird, like because publishers don't like there would have to be a point as to why. But I mean, 55 percent yeah, of Americans I think get what that that saying. should be written. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought you meant somebody I didn't know, so I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, to that's throw, okay. That's okay. That that's out. okay. I'm not mad at you. <laughs> so for for whatever it's worth, again. I may not have a corner on all things, but I think we totally underestimate yeah. the toxicity of pride and just how much it's leaked into our culture. Yes. But I'm telling you, pride is a major problem in the church, yes, in America it is. in particular. Yep. And it's a major problem in our culture today. Yep. Major, major problem. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about the Lord Jesus, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Christ crucified and risen. That's what life is about. And we need to make our lives about Him. Not about how great we are, even if we, we couch it in this idea of how great we are because of him. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. He's great. The end. Hey, hold up. Where are you going? You know you liked your time with us. You want more. So go ahead. Look down. Hit that button right there and subscribe. And you'll get updated episodes. And then you can hang some more. And guess what? You can help us out. How? A five-star rating. Hello. You can also hang with us live weekday mornings from 6 to 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Download the Moody Radio mobile app, and you're able to connect with us. Or just go to brianandjanelle.org. And listen, we didn't put all this together all by ourselves. There's some great people behind this production. We want to thank Ron Eastwood, Kelly Ryder, Paul Carter, Mike Reynolds, Alan Perry, and our awesome and fearless leader, Josue Villa. And finally, this podcast is a production of Moody Radio in Cleveland, a ministry of Moody Bible Institute.